and vaccine and parasite-borne disease. Dr. Schultz, it's so great to have you on the show. Dr. Shaw and I are thrilled you could be here. Well, thank you for inviting me. Well, we hey, both Dr. love Ron. you. We love the work you do. W- would you explain to people the really amazing lifetime of research you've done? You're the man that everyone turns to to know, you know, am I getting too many vaccinations? Why do I need vaccinations? What do you find is happening in the pet owning world about, I think people seem confused. They think they don't need any vaccinations at all, right? Well, I think there is a lot of confusion. And one of the most important things is that with various groups that have come up with guidelines for both canine and feline vaccines, we've defined the vaccines as to whether they're core vaccines, and by definition, a core vaccine would be a vaccine that every dog or cat must receive. Right. And then we have also identified USDA licensed vaccines that no dog should receive Ooh. and all the other vaccines that is the not recommended or the core vaccines are considered non-core or optional vaccines. And so what's really important to understand is every dog should receive canine distemper vaccine, canine parvovirus vaccine, and canine adenovirus vaccine. And that's frequently given as a combination vaccine, which is really the way you want your dog to get it. And I often equate it to MMR of young children, which is measles, mumps, and rubella, Right. The MMR of the puppy is distemper, parvo, and adeno. And don't separate those. Keep them together in a combination. Can you ex- and, Let me just interrupt, uh, sir, and ask you why to keep them together. I had rescued one. It's, uh, so, most- it's, so much, it's so much safer together because if you separate them, which we do not recommend, okay. there are things other than the distemper, parvo, and adeno in those vaccines like fetal bovine serum oh. components and oh. there's a whole variety of tissue culture components where the viruses are grown and if you separate them and give them individually that will actually hypersensitize the animal to these components that are in the vaccine and we don't want that to happen that it's, is so um, interesting. I've never had that yeah. explained to me before because I was told when I got these rescued Weimaraners that I then kept rescuing from various places that they were very sensitive to vaccines and that they should never be given a bunch of them at once. But I guess they yeah, meant well, that, not that, to give that this bunch. One. That bunch, yeah, that yes. That bunch is core, yeah. You don't, you don't want to necessarily give them the distemper parvo ad no uh, along with uh, things like Lyme vaccine and okay. rabies vaccine right. and leptospira. You don't want to do that, but the distemper parvo adeno, you want it together, not separated. That's really and interesting. Don't That's really to, good to know. Yeah, you don't want to start it earlier than six weeks. And, in fact, uh, we prefer that uh, you wait till eight to ten weeks to start the vaccination program. And then you want to make sure, no matter how many doses are given prior to 14 to 16 weeks, you want to have the last puppy dose at 14 to 16 weeks or older. So really, you can start at that eight-week period and then a three- or four-week interval with the last dose at 14 to 16 weeks. And the reason for that is that mom passes on antibody in the colostrum, the first milk, and that antibody is very important in preventing disease during the early life of the puppy, but it also interferes with vaccination or the ability of the vaccine to immunize. And so the majority, about 98% of puppies will at between 14 and 16 weeks have no mom's antibody or none of that antibody that can interfere with active immunization. So that's that's the reason for 
giving several doses. And I so often the reason, get the question, so just so we can make this clear to people, the reason to give the multiple vaccinations isn't that the dog needs three times as much. It's because at least one of those times you want it to be received by the immune system correctly and not be blocked by the fact that it already has some antibodies from its mother's milk. It's to make sure that at some point on that spectrum you have gotten that immunity into the puppy. That's correct. And and often uh, I'm asked the question, well, why don't you just wait till 16 right. weeks of age? Mm-hmm. And the reason for that is many of those puppies, depending on what the uh, antibody level is in mom, they may actually be susceptible to parvo at eight or nine weeks of age. So if they're susceptible to infection with the virulent parvo, then the vaccine will be able to immunize, and you want to get the puppy immunized as early as possible, and especially with parvo, because the younger the animal is, if they get infected with parvo, the more likely it's going to cause severe disease and death of that animal. There is an age-related resistance that develops to parvo, and that's not to say that if an animal's not vaccinated and it would uh, get infected at a later age that it couldn't get diseased. It's just that fewer of those animals would get severe disease and die compared to young puppies. And anything under six months of age is highly susceptible. You get over a year of age, and what I'm really suggesting and what we find is that under six months of age, if the animal gets infected with parvo, there's about a 50% chance that it'll die. Whereas wow, that's really, if, that's really disturbing. Oh, yes, very disturbing. And, in fact, we have a lot of litters that are young where 90-plus percent of the litters, uh, litter mates die from parvo. So it's a very severe virus. But if you have a susceptible animal that's a year of age, that particular animal uh, or those uh, animals over a year of age, more like 25% would uh, probably not make it. You would have to be treating more than than that, but you could uh, expect your treatment to be more successful in a dog over a year of age that gets right. infected. Right, right. I just want to give I want months. to give our number to the listeners 888-627-6008 that's 888-627-6008 if you have any vaccine or vaccination questions for Dr. Ron Schultz who is a really great professor and has spent his life doing this research Dr. Ron, what about the VaxaCheck test? Because they're one of our sponsors, and we think it's a really great new invention, if you will, a great new tool. And one of the ways that they say it should be used is on puppies after they've been vaccinated to make sure that they really got immunity. Does that make sense? Yes, that's a really good idea. So let's say you stop your vaccination program at 14 to 16 weeks, which is what the guidelines recommend. Then if you wanted to be certain, you would wait about three weeks after that last vaccination, and then you would look for antibody, and this particular test will measure antibody to each of the core vaccines. So it will measure antibody to parvo and to distemper, which are the two most important, but also the adeno is very important as well. So this test is very useful because what it will tell you is whether or not that vaccination has been successful. And if it hasn't, then you want the puppy to be revaccinated immediately so that you make sure it's protected at as early an age as possible. Well, that's really... You can also use that... Go ahead. No, that's just really helpful to people because we've never had that tool before. I had a Bedlington Terrier puppy when I was a, a young teenager, and he came from a very good breeder. I mean, there weren't even puppy mills when I was a teenager, to be honest. Right, Sean? I mean, did you? there wasn't no such thing when we were teenagers. People just Not had backyard dogs. I mean, yeah, you had backyard dogs. You went to maybe a breeder or a pet store. Maybe somebody yeah. in the street corner had a puppy. 
but there was no puppy mills. But anyway, the Bedlingtons were just, you know, like very private breeders, and this came from a good breeder. There was no such thing as a crummy Bedlington Terrier breeder. I mean, it's just like such a, right. you know, rarefied breed. And that and that puppy got distempered, Dr. Ron. Now, if I'd had Vaxacheck, yes. I would have received my puppy at eight or nine weeks old, done the puppy shots or continued with them because he supposedly had the early ones, and the timing must have been wrong. And he got right. distempered. Now, he lived, but he it was, you know, was terribly sick, and he didn't even look right afterwards. He didn't have white fur. He was just – it screwed him up. So I, he survived, yes. which was apparently a miracle. But the Vaxacheck would have told me this puppy is not – covered for distemper, right? That's correct. And so you could have had him revaccinated and within just uh, a few days after vaccination he would have been protected. Wow. So that that would have been very helpful at that time. The other thing that uh the vaccine check is helpful if you do test for distemper parvo and adeno after the last dose of the puppy vaccine what we generally recommend is then, if you don't do that, revaccinating at a year. But you really wouldn't have to revaccinate at a year. You could actually do the antibody test at a year. Right. And then I, I, I recommend doing it every three years. That's how often we also recommend vaccination. So you can either do the antibody test or you can vaccinate. And but, of so course, if you did uh, the antibody test and it showed that the, that the dog at that point had really great immunity to one or two of the of the core diseases but not to the other, then you could vaccinate only solely to that one, right? Correct. That, that's that would really that be great. Can do. Well, we have a call.